Guys, it's Kevin again, another movie for guys. Now, this movie reviewing, this is a movie that I definitely was very interested in seeing, uh, for the most part. I really didn't know much going into it, but I did check it out, and it is, uh, another release to come out this week that many of you probably have not heard of, but it is on VOD, and that movie is none other than Double X. No, not Triple X. This is Double X, which is completely unrelated to the, uh, Vin Diesel series. I know so many people have made jokes about that, but either way, I was very interested in this, uh, in, in this anthology series for, for a big reason. Why? One, because I always like these anthology-type horror films. There are a lot of things you can do with them. Some have been really good, some have been really shitty. And also because this is the this is a very unique type of anthology film in that every single um, short film here is actually directed by a female, and the main character is a female, which is very different than that of other anthology films. So I was very interested in seeing how that really was going to be. And after watching it, I have to say, I quite enjoyed uh, Double X. I thought this was a very well done anthology film that takes things that really shouldn't necessarily be scary and actually makes them scary. And it was cool to see each one of the director's visions. I thought they all did a very good job. But instead of me going into the plot, because there really isn't one plot, there are four different shorts. I'm going to talk about the plots for each shorts, and then I'll talk about which one worked, which one I didn't. So let me just talk about each one. The first short we have here is called The Box, and it's essentially about this little boy. Um, he purchases this box from this old man who tells him it's a present, and shortly after, uh, as the family gathers around the dinner table, this boy refuses to consume any type of food, and he just stops eating, and Quickly, the rest of his family kind of partakes in the same thing, ex minus the mother, who has to find a way to accept her family and also do what she can to keep them safe, obviously, because they're not eating. So that's really the first one. The second short is called The Birthday Party, which is a pretty simple story about this mom, Mary, who's playing a birthday party for her adopted daughter, Lucy, but she quickly finds that her husband, David, has died in one of the rooms, and she has to do what she can to... Uh, cover up his death before the chaos ensues of the par of the birthday party. The third short is called Don't Fall, which involves these four friends who are out in an expedition, expedition out in the desert, and one of them, Gretchen, is actually afraid of heights, and they quickly discover this ancient cave there and realize that there could possibly be an evil spirit among them. And the fourth short is essentially kind of a sequel to Rosemary's Baby called Her Only Living Son, which focuses on this mom, Cora, who starts to realize that her son, Andy, is not as perfect as he seems, and that's really all I'm going to say, but let's just get into each one of these shorts, talk about what I thought worked really well, what I didn't, and we'll just talk about, you know, which one I really liked. So, as far as the first short, The Box, I quite enjoyed the short. I thought this was a very good way to start things off uh, for the movie because immediately it's very, very different, and it really does stand out among the rest when it comes to horror anthology films because the plot of this movie doesn't sound like something that's scary. I mean, a, 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 a son refusing to eat doesn't sound like the scariest or even the most riveting type of short, but the way they do this is so well done in the sense where it, they make it scary, but it shouldn't be scary. This whole idea of him refusing to eat and the starvation that he undergoes and how this affects the rest of his family. You know something evil is among them, but they never really reveal what it is, and I actually like that they didn't do that. And the main actress here who plays his mother, Susan, Natalie Brown, is quite great in this role. Um, just portraying the fear in this mother, realizing that her son is refusing to eat, but also realizing the rest of her family is starting to go through the same thing. I thought it was extremely well done, and the rest of the family I actually really did like as well. Not really the most compelling characters, but again, it's only a 20-minute short, so you can understand why they weren't able to develop these characters as much. It is a very, um, it, 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 what I like is that it is very relatively simple. It doesn't really go beyond that concept, and I was completely fine with that. I like that it didn't go be on the concept. I thought it was extremely well done in that regard. I thought that, in general, it really did keep me hooked in. I thought it was generally very interesting. And what I really do love is that it took something that's very, very mundane, um, such as eating around a dinner table, and found a way to make that scary and make it interesting. My only real complaint with this short is I did feel that after, um, the son did get his sister and his father eventually involved in this whole thing, you know, things like, by the way, guys, like I said, spoilers and things like that, but, uh, once they, when he, he did eventually get them involved in, uh, eating, the movie did get rushed a bit, I definitely did feel the short was rushed after that, and I was still into it, but I just felt like it was a bit rushed, and they could have definitely dived into that a bit more, there wasn't really a given reason as to how it happened to Robert, her 
her uh, her husband, but despite that, I definitely really did love the short brawl. I thought it was very well paced. It was very different than any other horror shorts I've seen. I overall definitely really did enjoy this one. Now, the second short here called The Birthday Party, at first, I really didn't like, and it's mainly because it is so different from the rest of the shorts in this, uh, in this movie, mainly because it is a very relatively simple concept, and we've seen this done so many times, where someone has to hide a body, or someone has to protect themselves from letting it get out. The difference here is that this is actually played for laughs most of the time. Yeah, this short is actually a comedy short, which I was very surprised about, but I was actually very happy to see. It actually is kind of cool the way that this is very much a, de a slight detour from the other shorts. This isn't as scary. This isn't as sad. It's mainly funny, honestly. Seeing Mary um, trying to do what she can to hide this body from Lucy, I thought was very fun. And Melanie Linsky is probably the most well-known actress out of everyone here, who of course is from Togetherness, who I really did love on Togetherness. I'm very happy to see she's back here. And she was honestly very funny here, you know, seeing the desperation in her. But she also knows how to find the funny in something that is so serious and something that is so um, you know, just such a, dow a dour subject, she actually does find a way to make it funny, and every time, you know, someone would answer the door, or someone would, you know, come upon what she just did, it was very funny, I thought overall she did a very good job, I really did like this tour overall, it was relatively simple, but I definitely did have a fun time with it, and Annie Clark's directing also really does stand out, because of the color palettes in this, this is a lot more colorful, and a lot less dark than the other ones are, and it really does go, like I said, with the more light-hearted tone that the short has, again, it's not really the, you know, um, happiest of subjects, but it finds a way to make it funny, and I definitely do give it credit for that, because it could have just been dark, and, you know, it could have been just every other type of you know, um, hide the body type of short you've seen, but this really found a way to be something different, and I really do have to give uh, Annie Clark credit for that, because she really did do a great job with that. I overall really enjoy it. It was short, but I definitely enjoyed it overall, and I thought it was definitely really well done. Now, the third short here, Don't Fall, I'm not gonna lie, it is my least favorite of the bunch. I really did not find the short to be that great. Like I said, it is four hikers um, on an expedition, and they find this evil spirit, and it's every type of camp uh, horror short you've seen before. There's really nothing different going on here. It is definitely the one with the least character. The only character they really give is the main character, Gretchen, who's like afraid of heights. But even that wasn't that riveting. I really could not find myself to be that invested in this short. And it really is detracting uh, from the rest this movie's trying to do. Because if you haven't been able to tell, the rest of the shorts in this are pretty much all about motherhood. And really about... Um, trying to be a mother in a situation that is hard to be a mother. This one has nothing to do with that. This one's just four hikers and this lesbian couple, and I just couldn't find myself invested in this. I found this to be very predictable. I found it to be, honestly, kind of cringy at points. I really did not like the acting here. I thought the actors really were phoning in, and especially the main actress. I thought she was just very plain and wooden. I really was not a fan of her. The scares I could have told you were going to happen, like, it ended exactly the way I thought it was going to. The way you think this is going to end, it absolutely ends, and I was very disappointed by the short roll. I really wanted to like it a lot more, uh, but because of how great the other three were, it really did disappoint me. This one really did feel like it was just there to fill time, like, they just needed a third short. Like, they had three really well-done shorts, and they just need a third one, and they just kind of crammed this one in here, and it really does feel out of place. Like, it really does not go... Um, with the rest of the shorts in this film. Maybe in a lesser anthology film, I would have enjoyed this more, but because of how great the th the first three really were, I was very disappointed by this one overall. I really was not into it that much, and honestly, if you see the movie, I honestly recommend you skip it, because it's really not do gonna do anything for you. It's really not that interesting. It's very boring, and I really was not into it at all. I really could find not find myself to get that invested into what was going on. This one it was extremely predictable, and unfortunately was a huge disappointment from the other three. However, the fourth short, Her Only Living Son, absolutely makes up for that. Because when I say they saved the best for last, oh shit, yes they did. They definitely did save the best for last year. Her Only Living Son is this incredible story... Um, like I said, about Cora and, and her son Andy, and it's incredibly well done. It essentially is a sequel to Rosemary's Baby that we didn't know we need, even though it's not the same... I do, I do believe it's the same, her, her son's name is the same as the movie, which is crazy to think about, but they really did a great job uh, crafting this. I really did get into the story where immediately you see Cora and Andy, she doesn't really have much control over her son. She doesn't talk to him, you know, she doesn't really have any discipline with him. He seems to 
make most of the decisions and just something is off about their relation. They set that relationship up so well and the act the uh the the actor that played Andy did such a great job with channeling this role. I mean, this is a role where he is kind of unlikable, but at the same time you can see where he's coming from. There are times where he will say something to his mom and you can understand why he's saying that, you know, oh, he just wants to be a teenager, and that's what everyone says, oh, he's just being a teenager, you know, he's just maturing, and no one seems really that phased by the terrible things that Andy is doing. I mean, the first, you know, one of the first scenes is him ripping off this girl's finger, well, we don't see it, but we hear he ripped off this girl's fingernail, and the principal does nothing. It's this perfect example of, um, you know, it's, it's a perfect example of hearing about something is scarier than actually seeing it. Like, if we saw him do that, it really would not be that scary. It would just look grotesque, and we need to hear about that. But hearing about it is much scarier to think about. Hearing this mother having to hear her son do all these horrible things. And, you know, this is someone who's, who thought his, his father all this time was this movie actor, and that he was famous in Hollywood, and that's why he abandoned them. When in reality, his father is, in fact, the devil. And that's something that Cora has withheld from him, and something that she really has to come to terms with, that, yeah, her, you know, her husband is the devil, and that's really who his true father is, which is crazy to think about, but they do a very good job of setting this up, and especially once we get to that climax, it's very rewarding. I love the story. I was so riveted of what was going on. Her mailman as well, I mean, even the mailman seemed like he, there was something off about him, and there absolutely was. I really did love this short. I thought it was incredibly well done. Out of every short, I would recommend seeing this one. I honestly could have watched a full movie of this. I really loved everywhere this went. Christina Kirk uh, was the star of this, and I've seen her in Powerless. She's okay in that show. Again, she didn't have the best character. Now I see why people really like her as an actress. She was incredible in this short. I loved the fear in her. I loved how controlled she was as well. Like, this is a mother that never snaps at her child. She does whatever she can to try to control him, but she doesn't try to yell at him. She doesn't try to snap. She even says, I don't want to yell at you. So she's someone who really tries to discipline her son in a way in a way that's that's not really going to work out. And the ending as well was extremely shocking. I was so shocked with the way this ended. But overall, guys, I really did love the show. I thought it was incredibly well done. Out of every short you watch, this is definitely the one that I think you should watch out of all of them. So overall, guys, my review of each of the individual shorts, I really do like this uh, collection overall. I think it's incredibly well done. I think what I really like about all of this when it comes down to it is that, like I said, it really is about motherhood. It's about, you know, the, well, at least, the, you know, the three, the three excluding don't fall. It's about the challenge of motherhood and trying to be a mother in challenging situations. It also takes the most mundane things like sitting around the table and eating or setting up a children's birthday party and finds ways to make it scary. And it does it extremely well. I love the way this collection of shorts did that. I thought it was really well done in that regard. And yes, you can tell it's very female-centric, but it definitely does show that everyone has a voice and everyone has their own way to do horror. And that is something I definitely did love, is that each one of these shorts, they're all distinctly directed differently, which I really did love seeing. I thought all the directors did a good job in that regard. I thought the writing was very well done here. Um... You know, the only one I didn't think was done well was Don't Fall. That really is, it sticks out like a sore thumb. It really does deduct this a lot because it isn't short, but it's not long either. Like, it definitely is. It's not long, but it's not short either. It's about maybe 15 minutes long. It really does drag on. I really was not into Don't Fall. And the other ones were so good that it really is hard for me to not recommend this because I really did enjoy this overall. I really could see this being played uh, many times in like when in ha when Halloween time comes. I could really see this being played a lot. I think it's going to be the next great horror anthology. VHS didn't work out. You know, the first VHS was good, but the other ones didn't work out. I think this is definitely going to replace that. I really did love this anthology overall. I thought it was incredibly well done. Um, my only other complaint is that there are these stop motion intros before each short and. I really found them unnecessary. I didn't really know why they were there. They didn't really add anything to it. They tried to create a story at the end, and I was beyond confused. I didn't know why this was really here. It just kind of felt like it was detracting from what the rest of the movie was really trying to do. I felt like it would have just made sense to introduce each one just with the title screens, and that was it. They didn't really need the stop-motion introduction, which it's not bad. I think it's incredible stop-motion. Like, it looks really creepy, definitely. Um... But it goes on a bit too long, and it definitely is a little bit too predictable, and it just isn't really that memorable. I didn't really feel like we needed the stop motion there. And like I said, the third short really was not that great. Other than that, guys, I really did love Double X overall. I highly would recommend you guys check it out, and I am going to give Double X a 3.5 out of 5 or a B. And if you guys want my individual ratings of each short, I would give uh, the first short, the box, a 4 out of 5 or a B plus. 
The birthday party, I would give a 3.5 out of 5 or a B. Don't fall, uh, my least favorite short, I would give a 3 out of 5 or a C. And her only living son, I would definitely give a 4.75 out of 5 or an A. So over guys, Mary you double X. Let me know what you guys saw this movie overall. If you have seen it, I highly recommend you do check this out. If you guys love anthology films, this is definitely one to check out. A lot of anthology films nowadays, they don't really work very well, and you think you've seen it all. This one shows you haven't. It, again, it takes things that are relatively mundane, such as the mother's love for a child, or... Um, a family partaking in eating food and makes it scary in a way it shouldn't be and I think they did that incredibly well here I really did love this overall. I honestly would love to see a second one I really think that this could be uh, a franchise that goes on for a long time And I really do want to see what other directors have to bring to it. But that's my review Hope you enjoyed the most guys thought this movie over who have seen it love to your thoughts on it I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for Ain't to shield and I will see you guys for that. Okay. Bye